All right. Good day. Good day. So this is the alleged year 2023, September 2nd. Okay. I'm humbled to be able to give this foundational class to revive, you know, the ancient teachings, you know, of the sacred masters that left, uh, they left the vital process, the step-by-step -step process. And actually what's meant to happen in true would be called qigong or nagong right <laughs> you know I'm, I'm just getting into the term nagong apparently that's what i've been teaching all right so let's get it started all right the development of the qigong nagong body reconditioning the physical body to be a suitable vehicle for spiritual cultivation the I Ching Jing documented process left by the ancient masters on how the body gradually develops once the Qi is activated in the lower Dantian. And again, you will, if you don't know what the lower Dantian is, we'll, that's in the lower abdomen, the battery. Okay, let's get it started. So one thing and what I like about Taoist tradition is that it's really good at talking about the foundation. All right. So I want you to think of it like this. When it comes to Qigong and Nei Gong, think of it as the base level, the very bottom of the pyramid. That's the foundation to where you can actually begin to lay a foundation to do higher levels of internal alchemy. So essentially, this was where they started you. Think of it like a, a high level kindergarten class. <laughs> All right. So one thing I have to say, and this must be said first, is that the journey is all mental, really. So what we're doing this for, it's the redemption of the psyche. So the word psyche in ancient Greek, in uh, ancient, ancient languages, it, it was actually connected to the soul. It isn't just, well, it's the mind or the thoughts, the mental aspect, but we're talking about the redemption of the soul. All right. So. There are a large variety of people that focus either on body cultivation or mind cultivation only, hence the Taoist and Buddhist method, right? Now, when both are done correctly and simultaneously, this speeds up one's progress in the art of energy cultivation. However, it is important to note that inner Nigong energy work is primarily for the cultivation of the mind, Shen. We simply cultivate the body, heal the body, relieve tension, and open the energy channels to sustain deeper states of meditation. In other words, we cultivate the body to get the body out of the way to simply cultivate the mind. In all essence, energy cultivation has always been about mind cultivation. To overly attach to the body is said to be a deviation of the practice and a pitfall or trap. This is why masters refrain from teaching body techniques until the mental fundamentals were established. Let's continue. So the true art of yoga, qigong and spiritual cultivation is to live a highly moral life with established virtues. It is a change of behavior or a behavioral intelligence that is honed within one's psyche. The physical techniques of opening energy channels and awakening the yang chi or kundalini was said to only be a catalyst to sustain and amplify these mental states that were in harmony with the realization of the true self. All right? So that's why it's important and if you see there's eight limbs of yoga and they talk about first developing the virtues, developing restraint and changing your behavior. Because if you were just to engage in Nigong work without these fundamentals, what can take place is, here's the thing, it will sustain those very mental states and amplify them even more. All right. Now, uh, this was two months ago. Me and my, my good friend, Sophia Tower, we did a mental fundamentals workshop, all right? And what it says here is the most fundamental steps of authentic inner work are often overlooked in the online and modern approach to many spiritual 
physical practices like meditation, yoga, qigong, breath work, fasting, and abstinence. This is due to fixating on the end result rather than the process. Rushing past foundational preparation and the inner work at the risk of serious damage to our psyche, physical health. So in this workshop, what it says here, we discuss mental pointers, physical tools, and techniques, but most importantly, concrete and clear-cut guidelines on setting the most sustainable foundation and intention to any practice uh, that you truly wish to benefit from. So Mental Fundamentals exposes some of the deep-set mental programs, common setbacks, and overlooked aspects of the inner work that takes place alongside a spiritual physical discipline, non-dualistic self-inquiry approach to ensure sustainable cultivation while staying true to the spirit of the practice. So to purchase this workshop, that's actually a whole class in and of itself, uh, to download it, it's on my IG. You could go to the, my link tree in bio where you could get the link. So again, as I said before, all right, mindset is more important than the cultivation technique. Mindset is more important than diet. So in order, before you attempt to get into states of emptiness, you have to first know how to think before engaging in deep Nagong work. So even if you purchase the program, the online training, we also talk about these mental fundamentals and you get a various uh, different types of readings, all right? Now, this, this is, I have to talk about this, all right? The term enlightenment, right? So there are people that are, if you look in the Vipassana meditation, uh, a lot of mental inquiry where you be a self-witness to the emotional triggers, to the mind. And then you have another group of people that are, are into the Kundalini, the Yang Chi aspect of it, where it's a lot of the inner Nagong energy work or maybe the Pranayama aspect of it. So I want to say that when it comes to self-realization, I mean, come on, there's, there are people that fell down and hit their head and they attained some level of self-realization, uh, either taking LSD, um, different type of psychedelics, right? Someone could just be sitting meditating and they could have a, I had also a spontaneous uh, awakening back in 2019, Right, where you may actually, you know, see or connect to all of existence, all right, or see the true mind, the emptiness. However, that mental inquiry, what takes place is people will either use substances or they will uh, attain it uh, spontaneously. Now, the problem is they cannot go back to it. <laughs> so even though they attain it, they then have this desire to always try to go back into that state. And this is where addiction can take place to these various substances as well. Or it could, when you are dragged back down to earth and you have to look at your earthly uh, obligations, right? You can actually get a bit depressed because you felt this heavenly state and now you kind of drive back down to earth and have to deal with the day to day. So the mental inquiry, you will actually don't even have to know any form of cultivation work in order to attain or see these uh, self-realization states. Now, the goal of the inner Nagong energy work, when it came to building the body, opening the channels, was so that you could sustain this mental inquiry so that the yogis and masters were able to sustain their somati states. That's what this spiritual work is is when you can actually like just like how you could lift your hand up with your mind you could lift up a box you could it's the same like with your mind you can boom just attain that samadhi state or but or but or attempt to follow the Tao. okay so this is a good quote from uh with william Baudry and master nan master nan is actually a high level elder cultivator known in the east but not so much in the west so William Baudry is a publisher of his work. And this is what he says here. That's it. That is very true. Most people who wish to be involved with spiritual practice, not knowing any better, simply remain at the stage of religious learning and merit accumulation all their lives. Since they never cultivate towards enlightenment, 
they never achieve any high spiritual states, even though they are all within the reach of proper practice. In spiritual practice, you are just trying to discover the root consciousness of your mind. If people knew about the possibilities of practice, their lives would be filled with those efforts and tremendous spiritual progress. Instead, they just attend weekly religious gatherings for worship, follow all sorts of religious purity rules and disciplinary codes, and study spiritual scriptures as their path of religion. They try to do good and avoid evil deeds in life and cut down on impure desires. They watch their thoughts and try to be virtuous, ethical, and charitable human beings. All these activities help generate merit that will contribute to fortunate rebirths in the future. Nonetheless, they never cultivate high spiritual states. From that aspect, we can say that another life is partially wasted due to lack of meditation efforts. After they die, virtuous people are reborn in states that reflect their good deeds, including the mental purity they cultivated in this life. So sometimes they are reborn in a heaven. After that heavenly merit is used up, they once again transition to a new state of being and the process continues onward forward. In terms of subsequent incarnations, a position of high standing is replaced by a state of lesser standing once the merit is used up. As with the physical law of the conservation of energy, Consciousness is continually being transformed in the universe, and rather than being destroyed, just transitions from one state to the next. Because of this, you will slowly revolve through billions or trillions of births over the aeons until you decide to call an end of transmigration by making a determined vow to cultivate and awaken. Once you succeed in enlightenment, your mind can jump out of the causal net of reincarnation, and then you can also control where you will be born and what you will do. So you see to the left here, this is actually a pictograph of the reincarnation wheel. Now, from a Gnostic standpoint, another term for the reincarnation wheel, okay, would be, uh, I think they call it the demiurge, all right? So the demiurge, is uh, also the laws of nature. The goal of, the actual goal of cultivating, doing the Nigong work with the mental purity that you retain is you're bringing matter and mind as one. So enlightenment didn't only entail virtuous behavior and a change of behavior, but it also, you had to couple the energy work to bring it both together. Because remember, it requires energy, right? to be able to sustain these various states. So again, this was how, when there's a book called Arhat Yoga that talks about the process that the yogis went through uh, to cultivate their subtle bodies in order to transcend the law of the, reincarn or the reincarnation wheel or to transcend the laws of nature. All right? Now, all right, that was just a, Kind of an introduction. So now we're going to talk about medical qigong versus nagong, which is what they call it. But it, I, when my chief who introduced me to this qigong, he just said that this was the actual, real, traditional qigong. So what I think what took place was in when you read into the conventional modern terms, because medical qigong, qigong got water and watered down, which is, it's not a bad thing because the medical qigong, which was coupled with Chinese medicine, it was meant to build the body back up in order to prepare you for actual energy cultivation. All right. So medical qigong is more common than the concepts and realizations shared in this class. This is the qigong more associated with Chinese medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine's concept of qi is not entirely the same as the concept of qi cultivated in the internal arts of real qigong or the esoteric alchemical arts. Most try to correlate every aspect of both worlds, but Chinese medicine cannot get you full of qi or bilia dantian for you. So in other words, 
acupuncture, cupping, all these modalities and herbology are, it's meant to open up energy blocks. All right. That's what acupuncture is for, to balance out the yin and yang. To, so even when they say things like the kidneys chi or the liver chi, when I say bill chi in the dantian, it's a different concept than when they say liver chi. Liver chi is just, it's associated with the function of the liver. So when they say the liver is deficient of chi, they mean that the liver is not functioning optimally. All right. So let me continue. In other words, traditional Chinese medicine helps to bring you out of illness and imbalance and restore the body back to normal function of health. TCM assists with the restoring, with restoring the energy reserves that were initially already within the body, but have become depleted or lost. The difference with internal arts true qigong or nagong, as some would call it, is that it exceeds and enhances the body's function beyond the normal capacity for what humans know of as health today. Chinese medicine only restores you to that point. So we essentially are not talking about the same things here, although we are somewhat. So this is an analogy that I used the other day. All right. And hold on one second. Let me make sure. I want to do this right quick. And make sure, can you turn off your cameras? Because I want to, I don't want them to get in, in the video, okay? All right, so let me continue. Now, <clears throat> I have two analogies here where, uh, for example, you have a computer, a laptop. So to the left, Chinese medicine really would represent a system restored to normal function. So for example, you have a laptop and... You're adding antivirus and deleting files to restore the memory already built in the computer. However, you're not adding more memory. You're just restoring what was already there. So, you know, like, for example, if you have a computer and after you had it for a while, you have all of these files downloaded into it. You don't have antivirus and it starts to lose its, it, it uses up its memory and storage. And then the computer starts to run very slow. So, what you do is you add the antivirus, you start deleting files in order to restore the memory that was already built into the computer by the manufacturer, all right? This is the same concept with Chinese medicine, restoring the energy reserves, all right? Enhancing the, the function of the organs, right? Through secondary approaches, through herbology. Well, you know, medical Qigong, which is mainly medical Qigong deals with outside activity to, to kind of generate energy within, whereas Nigong, we're generating it from the lower Dantian, which we'll get to, all right? So in other words, medical Qigong and Chinese medicine deals with restoring or uh, the prenatal Qi that you already inherited, all right? Now, to the right, what you see here is an actual memory card, an IT guy adding another uh, more memory in the computer that initially was not there. So adding extra memory to a computer that inherently there, uh, that's a typo, not inherently there from its design from the manufacturer. So when we talk about Qi from a Qigong, Nagong perspective, we're not only restoring the, res the reserves or the Qi that you inherited, but you're adding more and building more than that's the beyond the normal capacity for humanity today, okay? So you this is why they say Qigong done right over time. It doesn't start off that way. It's a super healthy thing to do, all right? Let's continue. So for those of you that maybe, you know, most people know this are kind of uh, are familiar with the arts, but for anyone that's new, there are three energy centers that are talking about, right? In Chinese culture, in Taoist traditions, in Buddhism, all right? So we have the lower Dantian, upper Dantian, uh, middle and upper. These are the energy centers. However, when we start, um, you don't start trying to fill up the upper Dantian or the middle, right? Our focus in the beginning mainly is learning how to fill 
the lower abdomen because this is where the foundational energy center is because when you begin to fill up from the bottom, it starts to fill up the entire body over time. So you don't get full in the head if you're not full in the abdomen first. So what this also represents as well, which you see I have to the right, is there are three brains. There are three different minds. There's the impulses, the instinct, which is the body mind, impulses of the body, the middle dantian, which is the emotional mind, the emotions, and then the upper dantian, which is the regulation of thoughts. All right. <clears throat> so in cultivation, you're actually simultaneously working on all three together. And we will come to talk about what Jing, Qi, and Shen is mainly at the end of the class. All right. So our focus right now is the lower Dantian. Now, if I can say what is the most misunderstood thing in the Qigong community, it would be this. <laughs> and you will come to see what I mean because I have videos. So what is this family? I just have to say this. Welcome to the base level of the cosmic game. All right. This is where it all starts. And if you don't do this, you're not cultivating energy and you're not really doing true inner Nagong or energy work. So rebuilding the battery, filling up the lower Dantian. Now, what you see here to the left, and this is from a book called A Comprehensive Guide to Taoist Nagong by Damo Mitchell. All right. To the left. So when you're born, OK, remember that you were feeding through the umbilical cord. Right. You wasn't breathing in air and you weren't eating through the mouth. Right. Because you still was forming. You was in that gestation period from a fetus, from an embryo to a fetus to a toddler. Right. So you see here. This is where you were fed. OK, so the Dantian in the early stages of your life was in the womb, especially it was more consolidated. OK, because that's where you would draw the energy up to the brain and feed. OK, this, they, they also call it breath before birth, where when you inhale, the abdomen would contract in and you would kind of suck, suck it up and bring it up to feed the brain. And you would just kind of loop everything that you got from your mother, but the, plus, the, the placenta was the divine intelligence that would filter out the things. And actually the placenta, to be real, protect you, even protected you from your mother. <laughs> if your mother had degenerate habits, and so the placenta actually was this intelligence that would filter it all out as well. So anyway, just to get back on topic, as we begin to grow and we leave the womb and the umbilical cord drops off or is cut, this is when you get the concept of when you have to start breathing in air, you then have to take in breast milk, and then you have to start eating. So then there's this a gradual adjustment that begins to take place. So by the time you're like in your teens, you're like 14 or puberty and well into when you're 18 years old, the lower dantian your battery is is dispersed it's like a cloud-like structure it's not concentrated and you don't feel its existence per se it's still there but it's so non-tangible and dispersed like a cloud it's like it's like you trying to touch a cloud and and you don't feel anything it's the same with the energy in your lower dantian this is a natural process that begins to take place you know, and why is that? Because by the time you grew into maturity, you didn't really need a consolidated energy in the Dantian because your bones already grew to its capacity. The tissues grew, you know, so, you know, you didn't really need all that consolidated energy. So it just disperses as you begin to age. Now, the goal of energy cultivation, spiritual cultivation, and, and at least in the sense of cultivating the body is to bring you back to what they call that childlike state. Now, this is also, I want you to take what I say with a grain of salt, because the way I breathe today, I have never known my entire life. I have never breathed this way, even as a child. Even I could remember even when I was three and four years old, I didn't breathe this way. So I'm still saying this to say, they like to, oh, they like to say, oh, well, you forgot, you, you didn't know, and you know, or you forgot and you're just remembering. To be honest, maybe I remember from a past life, but in this life, I never knew how to do this. I'm just being real. I've never felt 
this type of breathing or didn't know it existed like this. So now when you begin to do the techniques that are taught, over time, the energy will begin to consolidate in the abdomen and it will become tangible and you will start to feel full in the abdomen, almost like a, like a subtle pregnancy. Okay. That's it. I remember, you know, but, and again, be careful when you read these books, like the Taoist traditions, when they talk about converting the Jing into Qi and it took a hundred days to, you know, convert the sexual essence into Qi, that's for someone that was perfectly healthy. We're not perfectly healthy. The process in the books, when they say it takes a hundred days, it took me one year and seven months to consolidate my Jing into the lower abdomen to where it would no longer be just dispersed where it's intangible, but it will begin to consolidate and you will feel actually the chi begin to expand. So this here is the base level and actually the most important, if you do not have this consolidated, you haven't even gotten started on the journey per se. Now, the method we use to consolidate the energy in the lower dantian is called the reverse abdominal breath, which is the active way within internal martial arts to accelerate the process to accumulate in chi in the lower dantian. In the beginning, you do not have much chi, or you, you, don't, you have it, but it's dispersed, right? And it's not building. So in other words, there is no chi to sink. So there's a concept called in the community called sinking the chi. This is where you learn how to sink the chi in the lower abdomen, all right, and build it from there. So you see here, when I inhale, the abdomen contracts in, you create, you empty the abdomen, you rise it up to the chest. Then when you exhale, it sinks down and you expand the abdomen, all right? Now, the reason we use reverse abdominal breath is because if you just tried to use natural breath and tried to get there naturally, it would actually, one, it might never happen, usually, because there are people that meditate that I know that have meditated way longer than me that do not know or have never felt a full consolidation in their lower abdomen. They've never felt a full battery. So in other words, just like how when you plug your phone and take a charge, in the, the phone is a battery that can hold the charge. So Basically, your meditations are meant to allow you to hold a particular charge of consolidated energy so you can actually begin to open energy channels. So the more chi you have in the Dantian, the more you have to circulate throughout the body. All right. So on average, I, I guess you could say a, a natural breath masters would they it would take damn near 10 years plus sometimes to just feel full in the abdomen. With the reverse abdominal breath, which is more of an active way of going inside the body, you can get there in as little as maybe one to two years. Some people, six months. You know, I, um, Some people are really <laughs> quick bloomers, you know what I mean? But either way, it's a marathon, right? So now the concept of sinking the chi, all right? Now, you may have heard this term sometimes in the Tai Chi community and maybe uh, in other videos, but most of the time when people say sinking the chi, it isn't really exactly like what I'm saying. When they say sink in the chi, it's more passive. It's not in the body. And for example, when I was in a martial arts class that was more external, I would hear the teacher say sink the chi, but it was mainly sinking the body mass to the earth chi. Like you're sinking the body into gravity so that you weren't, so that they weren't able to like pick you up, like you were grounded to the earth. But the missing part of sinking the chi was they didn't have any physical effects within the body. Like when you sink the chi, not only are you sinking to ground yourself, but also the you're, you're stretching or you're filling up the battery as well. So the, the breath, the awareness will drop down to the Dantian. So this is, I'm going to read this off, sinking the mass actively through the body. It is here. In the second stage of sinking your chi, that many practitioners fall foul of becoming stuck. They are often held back by one simple error. They are not distinguishing between sinking passively or actively. It is the active sink that we need to move our mass in the correct manner through our body. To understand the difference, think of it like this. Active 
sinking influences every part of our body as our mass moves through our body to the floor. Passive sinking is different from this. All right. So when you hear anyone say in a martial arts class or when they say sink the chi, this is what they're meaning. Not exactly what I'm saying. Passive sinking is different from this. As our mass is simply dropped to the floor without it affecting our body at all. It's as if we are sunk, we have sunk our mass and missed our body on the way down. Sadly, passive sinking is a default mode for our body. And so if we do not consciously work towards actively sinking, then we shall not stumble across it in our training. And to go back once again, actively sinking, not only to ground yourself to the earth's cheek, but to where you begin to consolidate the energy and feel full in the abdomen, all right? Now, lower Dantian activation. How does the breathing actually feel? So remember, reverse abdominal breath is meant to rekindle a breathing tech, a breathing that's called the embryonic breath or the full abdominal breath, okay? So these are from two different books, the same book, Comprehensive Guide to Taoist Nigong by Dao Damo Mitchell. And then the second picture is from Qigong Meditation, Embryonic Breathing. All right. So when the lower Dantian has become reconsolidated into a sphere, it will then have a number of energetic relationships with surrounding elements of the lower abdominal energetic matrix. So what does that mean? So you have here, this is the middle. This is when now you begin to feel that full or consolidated tangible energy in the abdomen. The main min is the lower back. Okay. The the Q high is the acupuncture point. That's two inches below the navel in the front of the abdomen. And the perineum, which is the storehouse of sexual essence, is at the bottom of the spine. Remember the, the pelvic floor, the perineum, right? So when you drop and sink the chi properly, and you see it's the same thing in this other book, they're both saying the same thing. It will drop first, because what do they say? The kundalini or yang chi is activated at the base of the perineum right? It, so you will feel it drop, engage into the perineum, the pelvic floor, and the actual battery is in directly in the middle of the abdomen. So your mind, your intention has to find the middle. Most people, when they start, their, their mind is in the front of the abdomen, which, which isn't really charging up. All it does is it stimulates this acupuncture point where they will feel um, more energy. Don't get me wrong. They will feel stimulated, but it, it dies off after a while because if you keep re-stimulating one acupuncture point, it kind of, you know, it, it's overexertion. It's overstimulation. It's not really charging up. So you, your mind has to go a few inches in the body. So they say, bring it, bring the mind above the pelvic floor and right in the middle of the Ming Men and this acupuncture point. So two inches below the navel, that's where the battery is, okay? Now, when you begin breathing the embryonic breath and charging up, the whole lower region of the body will fill up like a balloon. All of these muscles will engage. Not only will the front part contract, you will feel it'll be the lower back and the perineum, all will engage and you'll begin to fit, um, fill up. So this is from the book here, uh, Embryonic Breathing. In order to reach the goal of longevity and spiritual enlightenment, the Qigong practitioner must learn internal elixir Qigong. The first step to learning is to understand the theory and the method of embryonic breathing. Practicing this technique will help you to establish your central energy system, conserve your energy, and store this energy to abundant levels. All right. Once you have established this foundation, you will be able to practice this, the microcosmic orbit and the grand circulation of the macrocosmic orbit effectively. It is understood that without this foundation, the root of spiritual enlightenment will not be established and the study and the practice of spiritual enlightenment through meditation will be in vain. So once again, the reverse abdominal breath, when you begin, you don't have any chi to sink and you, you really don't know how to properly fill up the battery, all right? So over time, as you commit to the Nagong work, you will reactivate the Dantian and begin to feel full, well, engage these three parts, all right? Now, this is a video I have here, and I can say that 
probably almost everyone I meet, it's not, it's almost everyone I meet, believe this to be the abdominal breathing, where when you inhale, the belly expands, when you exhale, it contracts in, all right? That's actually not uh, the abdominal breath that gets you full of chi, all right? That's a step up from chest breathing, but many have, many believe that this is the abdominal breath, but, but because it only contracts the front part of the body, it's only half, okay? It's not dropping to the perineum. It's not engaging the Ming Min. It's not filling up the torso. So this is why here in another book called Qigong Teachings of a Taoist Immortal, it says that the breath has a rhythm of its own that should be allowed to slow down and become deep through the influence of the practice, not immediately or forcibly made to be slow and deep. Another problem with the breath stems from how the abdomen itself is thought to function. Most people think that just pushing out the front of the abdomen is somehow abdominal breathing. This is only half breathing. The abdomen should be thought of as a balloon or bellows with the entire area breathing, not just the front part. All right. So this is actually the most uh, uh, huge misconception of what the abdominal breathing is. So this is now... This is me, the full abdominal breath after filling up the dantian. So basically my jing converted into chi. So even when I inhale and exhale, you will see an expansion, but you don't see the abdomen contract in fully. It, may, it does a little bit, slightly, but so this is now showing that when the dantian and the battery is full, how the breath actually functions is it will immediately, it's like vertical. You breathe it in and it immediately drops down to the, to the perineum, right? Which then over time will, con what they call, convert the jing into chi. And then, as you see, it will fill up and stretch from the inside out the entire lower region. This is the base level. So... So when we talk about charging up, so even going back to, to this, these three, when it engages like that, the goal for you to first to get started in Nagong work is to have the lower dantian or abdomen overflowed with energy where it's so full, where it begins to overflow now where it can fill up all of the other channels. Okay? Okay. Next. So again, this is called sinking the chi. Now, also from the same book, Evolution of Sinking the Chi. So when you first start sinking the chi, it will just start in the lower abdomen. It doesn't just stay there, right? Now, over time, you notice what he says here, advanced level of sinking results in in the hang expanding in all directions. And we can come, come to uh, the hung. Uh, I, I think that's how you say it, or hung is, uh, that's what they call the, the connective tissue. Some say it's the fascia, but just think of it as the spaces in between the body, all right? The connective tissue that holds the organs up and basically holds the whole structure of the body together. And this connective tissue is also conductive and this is what the chi moves through. So in the beginning, it, it expands. It starts here, but then it begins to expand and stretch open the connective tissue. All right. So what he says here, image A shows the direction that your body will move when you sink as a beginner or when you are passively sinking. In this way, the more we relax, the more gravity gets a hold of us and pulls us down towards the ground. In B, we have sunk correctly over a period of time. Now the honeycomb nature of the hung or hang means that when I sink, my mass is distributed out through the hang and sinew channels in all directions. The sinking establishes a kind of spherical stretch and so my body will expand. All I do is sink and my body opens up as in B, all right? So it's as if sinking the mass initiates an expansion of the hang that inflates you from the inside. This will then in turn circulate the chi out through to your entire body. All right. So this is a demonstration here. All right. 
when I sink the chi, you will see it begin to expand and stretch my flesh. So there's a saying that we'll get to call where the flesh will separate from the bone. You have to allow the hang, the, sorry, the flesh to hang from the bone. And that's what the chi does. The chi is internally stretches the connective tissues. So you will see it here, slow motion. Okay, now that's not me doing anything with my mind, okay? I'm not visualizing anything. Original I Ching Jing Qigong or the process of Qigong was not imagined base. We didn't do a lot of visualizations in the beginning. I'm not saying that there weren't visualizations, but I'm saying at the very start, it there are some systems that get you to try to imagine energy in the Dantian, but you know, it, it's... It takes a very long time and it isn't really considered efficient to filling up the Dantian. So masters, they're kind of discredited using imagine-based systems to fill up the lower Dantian and they kind of came after the fact, all right? So no, this is not imagine-based. It's just like, you don't imagine that you have an arm. You don't imagine that you have a head, right? You have it. It's not based on your imagination. It's the same with chi. It's not so, for example, like sometimes people, they will, so let, let's say, you know, you close your eyes and visualize a, a, a golden light coming into the body, stretching into the, going into the arm. And then you, you feel this golden light penetrating into your arm, into your fingers, and you feel tingling in your nervous system and stuff like that. And, and you know, that's what people believe chi is. That, that's actually not chi. You know, it's, it's, it's just your mind, body, connection and your nervous system is responding to your thoughts which then causes energy clusters and sensations and circulations through the body but it's not the actual chi that we talk about in internal or chemical arts okay that's the big misconception because chi is an actual tangible thing that is not based on your imagination it is not subjective it is objective so again when you have chi it will stretch it's an internal stretch, okay, that will stretch the connective tissues, the fascia, the hang, which is in between the flesh, the muscle tendons, and the bone. And it will begin to kind of uh, like an internal gym, like when you lift weights, right? It actually applies a bit of stress to your channels. But then how else do you strengthen the channels, all right? So again, it just starts off at the base. And for me, it... it grows uh, up to here, right? I haven't really got it to the arms yet. I'm still developing. So on average, they say it takes about the first three years, it comes to the solar plexus, the another three years to the fingertips and bottom of the feet, and another three years, it will begin to stretch the tissues and, and go to the top of the head. So this is actually accurate um, where they say that the true Kundalini is activated or in, in after 12 years. Or as Grandmaster would say, it takes usually nine to 10 years to become full and abundant of chi. Can it happen quicker for you? Yes. But this is just kind of a set guideline that they gave. Okay? All right. Let's continue. So once again, the hung, hang, the fascia. What is fascia? The fascia is a thin casing of connective tissue that surrounds and holds every organ blood vessel, bone, nerve fiber, and muscle in place. This tissue does more than provide internal structure. The fascia has nerves that make it almost as sensitive as the skin. When stress, it tightens up. So you see, when it, think about the lifestyles that we live in and all the things that's going down on earth and what they put out on the news. And remember, the whole gist of, of spiritual cultivation or, or cultivating the body to be a suitable vehicle for spiritual cultivation is to not have uh, the mental states of stress of particular uh, mental states that are low vibrational. And it begins to cause the connective tissues to tighten up, whether it restricts the flow and the chi that you develop cannot stretch open these tissues, okay? So one thing I also wanna say too is, uh, um, let me see. Actually, I'm, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. So once again, in the same book, stretching the connective tissues of the body. So the active. So this, again, is when your abdomen is, is full and has an overflow of chi. 
right? Which we use the reverse abdominal breath in the trainings that we do in the online temple. So the active sinking within your body will stretch the hung. The filling of the abdomen with chi will stretch the sinew channels, all right? These are the channels they also talk about in acupuncture as well. So it starts off with the connective tissues and then it overflows into the sinew channels, right? It, it is as if the filling of the abdomen is starting to lengthen the sinew channels, the connective tissues that run near to the surface of the body. They will pull and tighten in a very specific manner. It will feel as though the more you sink, the more your outer body starts to stretch. It is a very distinct and strong feeling. As the sinew channels lengthen, they become more conductive. In this way, the more you sink the cheek, the more you help to open the channels. And this is exactly how it feels. Qi Gong is an internal stretch, an internal gym. And you're not going to the gym, the conventional way that we exercise. This is why in the beginning, we say to not do too much weightlifting or conventional exercise too much because you know, when you look at an average, strong, titan, muscular bodybuilder, they may be strong physically, but it, it, as you age, it's not good for longevity because the internal tissues and the channels haven't been stretched open and haven't been strengthened. Therefore, it can actually cause what they call, uh, uh, I, I can't remember the, the name of it, but it, it can, you know, body, the muscles will eventually turn into fat and it's not... It's, it's not anti-aging per se. It's good. It makes you strong as a youth, but as the decades go by, it's not a longevity practice. All right? So we say don't lift too much heavy weights in the beginning. When you develop your qigong to where you actually open in channels and it's, and it's grown, it actually doesn't matter. Then, you know, you can work out or, or do that conventional exercise a bit more. So this is also what I love about this is... Uh, and when you hear the term stress, it's usually associated with a negative thing. But from a Nagong practitioner, all right, Qigong, true Qigong practitioner, stressing the channels by stretching them is actually the only way to strengthen them. Think about it. When you're doing push-ups or squats or lifting weights, how else do you strengthen your muscles, your arms? By that push-up applies stress to to your arms and to your chest, which then develops muscle. So there is kind of a light internal stretch in the beginning, a stress. The stress that's added from the chi stretching open the tissues is actually a healthy stress <laughs> in your meditation. So stressing the hung, this is how we strengthen the energy channels. Okay, once the body is connected together in one unit, all right, I, I'm not quite there yet, <laughs> but I know what he's saying. We continue to stretch the body under the release of more mass. The active sinking must continue so that our mass is used as a stressor, stressor for the connective tissues. This will help them to continue growing and developing. Essentially, it is a cycle. The more we think, the more we stress the hung. The, and they grow, and this enables us to sink and stress them more. In this way, we keep building and developing our structure through consistent practice of sinking the chi. The more we build this connective tissue, the more the channels open and the more the chi flows. So going back to this again, it's a, it's, it isn't only a thing where empty mind. Regulate the emotional triggers, internal peace, relaxation. Your relaxation is meant to reactivate this energy that then causes an internal stretch or stresses, in a sense, expanding the channels to strengthen them. So imagine the yogis that were about 10, 20, 30 years down the line or masters that were in doing this practice and meditating for up to 40, 50 years. So over time, the lower Dantian, the whole body, becomes a Dantian. And, and when the channels are set, when the chi is said to fully stretch throughout the entire body, it doesn't only expand in the body. It continues to expand beyond the body. All right? So now this is why they say some Buddhists, they could expand their damn Dantian and energy like miles. 
and, and, and imagine the mental state of unconditional love powered by this type of energy that's been cultivated for decades. We have a love that's generated from developed human beings into masters that without these beings and these teachings, this place would turn into hell. This is why if you ever read those books and they say uh, unconditional love, it, it could generate and expand and surpass thousands upon thousands of people like that don't have that type of love or have uh, mental aberrations in their psyche. So as you expand your energy field, that alone will alter the behaviors and bring awareness into other people around you. The light does the work. And once again, it's not imagine-based. This is not me doing anything with my mind. I'm just being a witness to it. That's the beauty of the Nagon work. All right? Time to continue. So you may have seen me talk about this, and this is something uh, that people know. It's called the Yi Chen Jing Muscle Tending Change in Qigong. Uh, these are the classical movements with this style of Qigong. However, this is very misleading because... Yi Chen Jing is a set of guideline principles, okay, that the masters left on. They documented the process of how to cultivate the body in order to prep for following the Tao, okay? So if you type in Yi Chen Jing in YouTube, what you will see is uh, a lot of different variations of movements and, and exercises, but Yi Chen Jing actually isn't exercises or movements at all. It's an awareness that's cultivated. So it's it's a it's mainly a step-by-step -step guided principles. So the first step in I Ching Jing, the process is to activate the chi, like we say, to become full, know how to cultivate the battery, get it started. That's your chi pump. Then after that's activated, this then begins to stretch the hound, the connective tissues. All right. And then after that, so this is now when you see as it expanded in my body, that's when the flesh separates from the bone. That's what the chi does. And that in the tissues in between the flesh and bone is how the chi can run through throughout the entire body. So as that chi runs through the tissues, it, this is the ending stage where it strengthens the muscles and tendons. But that's a byproduct of the chi running through the sinew channel. So we're not really putting any focus on the muscles and tendons. It's just a byproduct of the work as you activate the chi. So Yi Chen Jing is a set of guided principles given to us by the masters on how to recondition the body for spiritual cultivation and for higher levels of internal alchemy. Yi Chen Jing is not a set of exercises or movements. It's an awareness that is cultivated, a process of transformation that the body undergoes as you cultivate chi and open the channels. Once again, and this is from a, this is the website, beautiful breakdown of it, all right? Water Dragon Arts, this brother is, the way these brothers break it down, I have so much admiration for them, you know? That's why I had to just be like, you know what? I can put it right there and just give everyone the books and the sources. <laughs> so anyway, one mistake many beginners make is believing that the I Ching Jing is simply a relaxation exercise in which you need to find a deep meditative state. This is only partly correct. Although a calm and peaceful mind are very important, you should start focusing on your internal structure as well as the amount of relaxation and engagement on your sensations. So the empty mind part of it, a lot of people, what they believe Qigong to be, it's way too relaxed, man. There ain't no yang chi or no pressure that's developed inside that are actually stretching open the channels. It's not an internal workout per, per se, you see? Ooh, it's too yin. So if the stretch of the hung is insufficient, or in other words, you are not able to separate the flesh from the bones, your chi will end up flowing into the muscles. Even though this might help you strengthen your muscles, you will not be able to build the tendon qualities in it. The more chi can travel into the hung, the more it will develop and the more elastic strength can be built. Qi and Hung have a symbiotic relationship. If you are familiar with the concept of the Dantian being an accumulation of the layered tissues with different 
conductivity, which acts as a battery, you would be able to understand this relationship. All right. So chi must be full in the Dantian to mobilize the chi through the connective tissues. All right. As we have learned, the transformation needs to be based in chi, which then transforms the connective tissues and so on. In order for the chi to flow into the hang, of its own accord, it needs to be built sufficiently. Naturally, you will need to cultivate and store an abundant amount of chi in your lower dantian. This is why breathing exercises and the small circulation training are creating the fundamental framework and strong foundation for the I Ching Jing. These exercises will help you to cultivate and store chi, which you can then use to develop your hung. When you allow the hung to stretch through relaxing, the chi will start to travel into it and begin to grow and thicken and strengthen it. It will actually, so even by, by you relaxing, all you're doing is relaxing, but it's, but it's not a, a passive sleep relax. It's not the same relax or rest like when I go to sleep. It's an active rest that allows and surrenders to this energy to start stressing and expanding and stretching open, separating the flesh from the bone to run through the body, which is a lengthy process. It's not overnight, but when you activate it, it's a beautiful thing. It's another type of help that's unknown to the average human being and even to the millions of Qigong practitioners. There are Qigong practitioners, mostly medical, that are years into the practice that have never filled up their dantian or feel no type of internal stretch through the body. They are not doing qigong or nagong, whatever you want to call it. They are just doing gentle physical exercise and mimicking the movements that they see us do. So once again, the I Ching Jing muscle tendon changing process, all of the qigongs taught in the online, so these are the qigongs that I teach. All of the Qigong styles taught must go through this process in order to be considered an authentic practice. Meaning, even though we do doing Bad Wan Jin and Six Healing Sound and different styles of Qigong, they still are under the I Ching Jing process, which means even in Bad Wan Jin or Diamond Qigong or Lotus Qigong, we're still doing I Ching Jing. Okay? So all of these styles are undergoing the I Ching Jing process theory, regardless of the movements. It's the stretching internally. And what we do is we twist the spine. We do horse stance. We do bow stance. We uh, lift on one leg. We stretch open. So, so not only are we internally allowing the chi to stretch us from the inside out, but we're also doing an external stretch to speed up the process. So Qigong is an internal and external stretch, right? So the body needs to be stretched like a string on a guitar in order for the Qi to flow into the hung and the sinews. If you pick the string, it will send a vibration along its entire length and create a sound. If the string was under no stretch, this would not work. It is important to release habitual tension and learn how to let the muscles hang from the bones. Tension in the body will create blockages, which can, which you can imagine as little pieces on this guitar string. It will prevent the flow of chi along its length. It will prevent the string from sending the vibration through its length to create a sound. With the muscles relaxed and the hung stretched, you will activate the sinews and these tissues become like a string. The flow of chi channels, their function will become better and stronger. As a result of this, the organ function will increase because of an improved energy supply. Everything related to the open sinew, sinew channels will improve, including physical and mental health. This is the main goal for practitioners of qigong or tai chi for health. If you deepen this practice from here, you will continue to transform the body even more, which is generally the goal of martial artists or serious Nagong practitioners. So in other words, the goal of Qigong is to become full and abundant, okay? That's the goal. So I'm telling you right now, a lot of the Qigong practitioners or people I think they teach in Qigong on IG, 
It's mainly just energy circulation of what you already had in your reserves, but they have not built the extra energy built in the Dantian to do the stretch, internal stretch. Now, the funny thing is, it's easier to allow for the chi to open these channels and stretch these tissues in a standing still meditation. So a lot of the postures we do in the temple, we're not doing a lot of movements. It's not like a Tai Chi thing. It's, it's Tai Chi and Qi Gong are different, all right? And a lot of people think they, they choose Qi Gong because they think it's an easier alternative than Tai Chi in, in yoga. Not true. Qi Gong is just as complex <laughs> than the other ones. It's just the movements on the surface look easy, which they are, but that internal stretch, boy, we're not pulling open them channels. It takes some getting <laughs> it takes some getting used to, man. I'm telling you, and it really does, you know. So I, I say this to say is that, you know, they are just doing movements which are helping the person's health, but it's more so on the Chinese medicine, the medical side of it. We're talking about here on building power and strength. Okay? In the true alchemical arts, the one that was mainly kept hidden from people. All right. So this is just a good pictograph of the sinew channels, right? You know, uh, when you have here, you notice here, right, where the dantian is, and and there is a, a channels that run up the leg, and it's a certain way you stand, where you don't stand on the back of the heel, because if you stand on the back of the heel, it it, it engages the the muscular tension, which will not open up the fascia, the connective tissues in the legs. So you have to stand kind of on the front part, close to the soles of the feet. And it's a certain way you stand that actor that opens the fascia to allow for the dantian, the chi built in the battery that you've done in your nagong practice to then travel through and open the leg channels, which are then, as you can see, connected here as it begins to expand and stretch. And it's much more, trust me, it is much more complex than this. <laughs> you know, I can't even fathom how much channels there, there are and nadis. So as it begins, and all you're doing, family, is you're just standing there and letting it happen. It's not, <laughs> once you activate it, this is why I said it's not really breath work. It's the Dantian and the built up chi that does it for you. The, the breath work is not, even for me, when I sink my chi, I could sink my chi. And the chi will expand and stretch the fascia without the inhale or exhale. It is, when it's stored, it, it isn't even dependent on the inhale or exhale, man. It's not breath work. But it starts off as breath work where you rekindle and stretch open the abdomen. And, you know, that's why in, in the when we train, you stretch open your abdomen and breathe into it to fake it before you make it. Where you you stretching it the abdomen with your mind, and then you breathing into the abdomen until you finally store some chi in it, and then it just stretches on its own, you know. So anyway, <laughs> but you know, it, 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 on on average, so imagine you've dedicated to this practice, and now you surrender, and this is what they mean. Get it, family? This is what they mean by effortless action. You see how it make more sense, right? effortless action but you got to put in a lot of effort in the beginning to activate the damn battery which is much more trickier than you've been led to believe they have y'all they have people thinking it's just inhaling to the abdomen spine exhale contracting imagine energy no it's trickier than that man it just takes time but when you build that base level it will begin to make a lot of sense all right, more on the Sinu channels. All right, you could do some research into that. I'm actually going to go and study uh, in, into Chinese medicine as well and acupuncture, you know, just in case. Uh, as I continue to progress in this and have a place here in the Bahamas, a training center, I got to know all that other stuff, man. You know, in case I want to be able to help people. If, they, if the chi starts to expand to a particular blockage and they have pain, I at least want to be able to do acupuncture or give some type of herbology, something to assist the process, you know. I don't want to just, uh, you know, I, I'm not the one to just say, oh, just keep doing it. Keep, no, sometimes, you know, it, it people have deep blockages and they need assistances from a chiropractor or other things as well. All right. Okay, so the last slide. 
and people have heard this in Dao's traditions, and it's about the Jing Ti Shen, right? And I love this analogy, man. But I want to say this. Uh, so brothers, you know how they talk about semen retention. Now the sisters, you know that there's a book called, uh, I'm going to put it in the group. It's called Taoist Negong for Woman. Okay, because I know a lot of y'all could feel like this is mainly a male dominant. It's not male dominant at all, man. It talks about more of the menstrual blood and how your jing is lost through the menstrual blood, you know. And as for men, so women are more superior to sex. And actually, a woman's body by the masters was considered to be more better for spiritual cultivation, <laughs> you know. But the problem is, you know, uh, women are more yang in the body and yin in the mind, men are more yin in the body and yang in the mind. So a woman can get past, uh, can be celibate and abstain from sex and, and lust. And it's actually easier for women to do it than men. You see, men have a harder time getting past that. You see, so a woman can pass the first stage easier than men overcoming bodily sensations, right? But the problem is, is, is her regulating her emotional mind, her emotional attachments, you know. So her emotions is, is an obstacle more so than men. Whereas a man, his obstacle is sexual desire usually. It's, it's a lust. It's, you know. So, so men don't even get past the first phase. But you see, when a man gets past the first phase, it's easier for him to kind of get, since the mind is more yang, he can actually surpass and, and, and manage his emotions better. So man and woman both have obstacles to the spiritual path, okay? It's not that one is better or the other. Or you try, you know, sometimes you ever watch those YouTube channels where one favors the man more, like the red pill, and then you have the other ones that one favors the woman more, and then you have one saying the woman are the gatekeepers and the, the woman are the one that will look over the men and then the men are this and that. Well, both men and women can become enlightened, Okay. Just have to say that. So when we talk with the Jing, brother, um, the sex, which is the Jing, isn't really so much about the semen. It's about the ujas, which is the subtle part of the semen, the energy that runs through the entire body. So uh, something I said, too, if you do not know how to sink the chi and fill up the battery, my brother, you're not really making use of what you call semen retention, all right? Now, you may get some physical benefits from it. I'm not saying that there ain't any form of benefits, but it's not the transmutation that the yogis talk about, and it's not uh, the spiritual the mind-body transformation, the spiritual transformation that comes with holding in your seed. I want you to think of it like this. Imagine, brother, you take in creatine or drink protein powder, <laughs> but you don't go to the gym and you don't work out, it's not, what is that going to do, right? It's not going to do shit. It's just, <laughs> it's just going to sit in your colon. It's not going to be used up. Isn't it the same where the jing that you hold it in, which is like the substance, when you sink the chi, it converts it, uh, the jing into chi, or consolidates the jing, and that consolidated jing is then what does the internal stretch and opens the organs. So it's so now with that restored jing from sinking the chi, that semen, right? You actually making use of it and you consolidated it, consolidated the energy down there and activated it to where now it's expanding and applying stress and stretching open the tissues, right? Doesn't that make sense? So now you're making use of it just like a dude uh, drinking a. Uh, the protein powder going to the gym. Now you're actually doing the internal gym for both man and woman, right? You're storing the menstrual or whatever, or whatever it is, okay? I, like I say, for women, it's, it's, it's a book called Lotus Nagong, and it's written by Damo Mitchell, okay? So the Jing, this is a good analogy. Jing is represented by the wax and the wick of the candle. The quality of the wax and reserve of the wax available for burning determines the life of the candle. Your jing, which is determined by your genetic inheritance and your deep energy reserves, determines your longevity. It takes a long time to deplete jing and, is it extremely, and it is extremely hard to replenish. When you know true qigong and can sink the qi and activate, you can actually rejuvenate quicker. All right? So now when the jing converts into qi, right? You know, it's kind of a weird converts. It's not like that. It's, it's all the same thing, but it's just 
where the process is, you know, maybe it's like Jing and then converts into like a gas. And, you know, anyway, I mean, so Qi is represented by the flame of the candle. It can sputter and smoke or it can burn brightly and evenly. Your Qi is your vitality or daily energy. It provides the source of light. However, it eventually consumes the candle. When your Qi is used differently, your Jing lasts longer. Qi is easily depleted through daily activity. And when a person is healthy, it is easily replenished with sleep, nourishment, and breathing. Right? Okay, so the Jing is the substance. The Qi is the flame that was ignited from the substance that opens the channels. Shen is represented by the light that radiates from the burning candle. The purpose of the candle is to light the darkness. Your Shen is the radiance of your spirit. When Jing and Qi are in abundance, Shen is released and Shen is the mind. Okay? That's when the Qi and the tissues and it, um, it expands from the Dantian and it goes into the head. And then it begins to open up the tissues and the channels in the brain. And then this is when they talked about now being able to attain samadhi states at will, at will, without the need for shrooms, LSD, ayahuasca, uh, uh, mantras, sounds. It would just be a, a, it's a natural phenomenon. Kundalini or what they call yang chi in Chinese culture is a natural phenomenon from this practice that arises. It isn't this burning heat and pain. That's only when it's pushing through blockages, man. That's not how it actually functions. So this is why they say it's usually a 10 to 12 year process where eventually it will begin to internally stretch to where all of the tissues will connect into one unit. And now you'd be able to contain that that meditation because you've connected the lower regions of the body to the higher. And you know, you want to know it's funny. That's only the beginning of the journey. <laughs> this, the, so welcome. So this is like, uh, what, when you, when you start kindergarten, it's like the alphabet, but, but get this though. If you did not learn the alphabet and hooked on phonics, you couldn't apply for that job. Brother, you couldn't go talk to that girl you like. You couldn't, uh, you know, you, you essentially couldn't even have done it. You couldn't read. You couldn't read a sign. You couldn't learn how to drive a car. You couldn't. So the foundation, the foundation, that's what this is. You see? So now the Taoists would be like, okay, or the ancient masters oversee you as the student. Like, okay, you put in the work. Now you are ready, my child to follow the Tao. If you just trying to pull up and go to nature and follow the Tao without this prep work, in other words, good luck. <laughs> you know, unless you have some masters in your lineage and they come to you in a dream and help, right? Yeah, that happens. But other than that, so the whole gist of this class, that was the last slide, once again, is so you understand what Nagong, what Chi, what, what was this all about? All right. And just like I said, when you go in to get drafted on a team to play football, to play rugby, to, you know what I mean, or to be a swimmer, you went through a series of trainings to recondition the body. All right. To play on that team. So it's essentially like we're playing the cosmic game, aren't we? And this was this prep work was what allowed them to transcend matter. OK, not only that. But the inner Nagong energy work and the mental inquiry of self-realization, this was the, the holy marriage of Lady Shakti and Lord Shiva, right? Even uh, uh, when they say what, um, what it is, I can't remember, but then let me keep it there. So, so the masculine and feminine counterpart all come together. And as your channels open, all right, you will allow for more cosmic light and cosmic forces that radiate and power the earth. You got to remember, man, if the sun ain't there, the earth ain't feeding you. Okay? So if you're eating from the earth, remember, you're eating secondary light. Check it, right? So there are cosmic forces that are radiating and falling down that you're receptive to, even the earth. All right? 
And as your channels open, it begins to alter and awaken parts of the body. And the somatic cells are reprogrammed by the light. All right. So hope you got something from this class. I didn't want to make it too long. I kind of, you notice I got straight to the point, right? <laughs> okay. So once again, if you're interested in the Nagong training, Qigong, yeah, I'm not used to calling it Nagong, but from reading, that's what people call it nowadays. <laughs> Before, so again, they, would, they called it Nagong because they wanted to distinguish it from the medical Qigong that was out there that was that masters just kind of dismissed the superficial practice. You see? So anyway, I uh, hope that you found value. And I'm going to, once again, you could go to my website or remember, I think I put in the group, if you're new to the group, um, you could message me or I could put it, the flyer in where there's a two-month special for online training and a one-on-one -on -one where we could get deeper into the practice and more of a, a practical sense, right? So this is the theory. Just to let you know, how does Chi actually feel, all right? And once again, we always end it in saying, Amitofo, infinite light and wisdom to you. Okay. Let me stop there. Yeah.